Computers have been transformative to the engineering profession, but we're far too often hampered by the software that we have available to us. However, as engineers, we can take control of that by learning a language that allows us to manipulate the data from the design software. I'll be going through what language I think you should learn, why I think you should learn a programming language, some tips about learning that language, some key concepts for you to consider when you're starting to approach that design, that will help you build those structures together and how I go about developing a software from concept through to testing and through to final design. Yes, the software that we produce will not be as polished as some of those commercially de developed softwares. However, it doesn't need to be. It just needs to be enough so that you can manipulate the data and automate some of the boring parts. My name is Brendan, your structural engineer. So let's get into it. So why should you learn a programming language as an engineer? You went to university to study engineering, not computer science. This is really where I want you to open your mind to the power of a programming language. Probably one of the biggest things is how you can manipulate that data and how quickly you can do it. So a lot of the time, we'll get our design software and we'll get it out of a program such as eTabs, Tecla, or in other locations, and then throw it into a program such as Excel. Excel is very limited by the software that's written around it, and it's not really there to process big data. Where programming language such as Python, which is the one that I actually recommend, is built for that. So when anyone's trying to manipulate big data, they'll go to a standalone software such as Python that allows you to manipulate that data easier. Another great thing about a programming language is it allows you to automate the mundane or those boring monotonous tasks as you're able to create loops that are able to manipulate the data over and over again for repetitive tasks. So anything that you're doing day in, day out that is really easy is something that can be easily automated in a programming language as well. This can be even the extraction of data out of different softwares. A lot of the time, the software companies give us access to the API so we can pull that data out easier. You can see this through programming programs such as eTabs and Bentley and many others that give you access to the base API. And a lot of time that API is also manipulated through a programming language, but most often one of those options is Python. So you're able to quickly pull out the data through a little plugin that you have written in Python and manipulate it how you need to. And programming is really about solving problems. And I don't know about you, but me, I love solving problems. And a program language is really about solving those little problems to come up with your final solution. I've loved learning computer programming languages, even with my engineering degree, as what I've learned at university about how I approach a problem also applies to software engineering as well. As a program, it's really a series of problems and concepts that you need to put together and solve them to come up with your final solution. And just pick it up and try it, and I'll soon think you'll find that it'll be something that you'll enjoy especially with the time and effort that it will save you in your engineering solutions. Another one is the fact, I'm sure you've done it before, where you've got multiple different Excel sheets and trying to control to make sure you're on the latest Excel sheet become really cumbersome and tiresome. They've actually come up with a solution for this and this is versioning control. So you can get software packages such as Bitbucket or many others that allow you to quickly version control so you can make sure that you're always on the latest software. And also through versioning control, it has those many versions in the different stages that it was built in. So if you have a problem here, you're able to quickly roll it back to find out where that bug was put in. So how should you go about learning a programming language? You need to work out how you learn. And it's normally a combination of other things. And hopefully you've worked this out through university. So depending on how you learn, there's some good tutorials and documentation at docs.python.org. I'm sure you can find a number of Udemy courses out there that will teach you the basics of Python. You really want to learn the basic fundamentals of programming design and not just jumping into it. As a lot of the time, you may miss some of those first fundamentals about the programming language that will almost be impossible for you to pick up later and potentially make you quit learning that programming language before you've had a chance to learn about all the key concepts. However, me personally, it's about doing simple tasks. So getting your hands dirty and starting off with really simple ideas and breaking it down into the most simplest concepts. So building a little program such as Hello World or something that manipulates data from this location to this location opens a file. Just start somewhere, something that is really simple as a really long script will be hard to work out. And I really recommend you getting your hands dirty 
trying out those little bit of scripts before trying to find the answer. If you do get really stuck, there's a really good forum out there called Stack Overflow. It's a wealth of knowledge. And by searching on it, you're most likely going to find a solution to what your specific problem is. And if not, I'm sure you can ask questions on that forum. There'll be enough people out there that'll be able to help you with your issue. But you just not want to come to them with the problem without trying to solve it first. And when you do pick it up, you will make mistakes. However, everyone learns by making mistakes. If you never made a mistake, you're likely never learning and never pushing your boundaries. Programming can really help you transform your career. So I hope you haven't seen you the light. And if I have, hit that like button. It really helps me out and allows me to think about the content to create for you. Now let's keep going. Now Python, it's an object oriented language. So what does that mean? Well, it's really a concept about how a programming language is put together. And there is a number of these out there and they're actually quite common. So if you have learned another object oriented language such as VBA or Java, those similar skills apply to Python as well. Yes, there will be some key changes that you will need to learn about the language and some unique coding and the way to develop a code for that language. However, the key concept of a project object oriented language doesn't really change. So you've picked up one, it's not too hard to pick up another one. A really easy way also to pick up a programming language such as Python is Grasshopper or Rhino, or even Dynamo, just depending on what you have access to. These are really a visualization of a programming language. As you can see, they have these little things that are called batteries and they have strings coming into them. These strings indicate the flow of data and each one of these batteries or cells is what can be considered a module. You're really learning the fundamentals of how a programming language works. And these softwares also allow you to build your own batteries. And so by learning Python, you're able to manipulate the data in certain ways that potentially you do not have access to if you didn't know that. So what are the key concepts of a programming language? What you've got to realize and how I think about it is the fact that a programming language, as the name suggests, is a type of language. So the way you think is really in computer speak. So trying to process that data. However, engineers, you're somewhat wired to think this way about processing data and how you approach problems. So there's a number of key concepts that you need to consider when you're writing a language. It's first defining your variables. Strings just a series of text. A Boolean is obviously ones and zeros, so on or off. Now integer and float. Now this is where it becomes interesting. So an integer is a solid number. It doesn't have any decimal places. So if you defined a variable as an integer, it will always round that number where a float is a number of decimal places. So it's a lot bigger number. And then you also, if you're starting to get even to a lot of decimal places, just if you need something that's really refined, sometimes you may need something more accurate, like a double float. It's really about knowing those different variables that you're dealing with and the limitations of each of them and just play around with them and you'll soon see how they behave. Another key concept is what operators are. So how can you manipulate that data? So you've got your first concept, easy ones, which are your mathematical formulas. So your plus, minus, divide, square root, and so forth. And sometimes you may need to actually find another library that'll help you do some of this. And I'll mention this later. But also, how do you manipulate the flow of data through the design? So if something is equal to something, then do this. Or if else, if it doesn't equal to, how a for loop works, how a while loop works. Now be careful with loops, because if you create an infinite loop, you could be there forever. So really making sure that you do have that break function in there that will trigger at some point. And another key concept, because we are talking about manipulation big data, is looking at about data frames and how they work. The simplest way to think about this is more like your Excel table, where you've got a number of different variables in a matrix format that allows you to define them to build that data frame. The problem with Python, it doesn't necessarily have all the tools it need with it built in. However, there's a number of different libraries that you can grab that will help you get the numbers that you need. The two that I actually recommend is SciPy, which gives you all those mathematical formulas such as pi and data manipulation, or Pandas. And Pandas is really for that big data processing. So when you're getting your data frames and sorting and filtering of data is where a program such as Pandas comes in. And now you need to load them at the start of your documentation. So when you're writing your program, it's able to know what the different command calls are in the design. Now, if you do find that Python is not necessarily what you need, the time has not been wasted as well, as all object oriented programming languages are very similar. So if you learn one, it's not very hard to pick up another one. So how do I go about developing the software and which ways I'm going to manipulate the data? 
where it's really looking at my design workflows. So how do I actually approach a design and what is the most tedious task? So trying to get the biggest bang for the buck. So what is something that I can automate easily that'll help speed up my design? And a lot of the time I've potentially started this in a program such as Excel that already has that database already added in there. And I can really flesh out how I want to process the data. And it allows me to also build in those interfaces that makes me manipulate the data easier to get the correct answers. And by also starting it off with something like that, I can easily prototype a design workflow with a number of different people as well. Through building an Excel sheet, I can give them that Excel sheet about how I think the interface should look and they're able to give feedback to me quite quickly. And so by putting together a simple Excel sheet that allows us to manipulate design data, you can get through a quick process to get to the final solution. And when I find that solution, I then take the time to start processing it in a programming language such as Python. So why don't I just stay with that Excel? A good example of this was one time I had this massive data. So we had like 84 win cases in a number of different directions. We had a lot of data that we needed to manipulate and find the peak forces in the design. So what are the critical design cases? Yes, I was able to write an Excel sheet that was able to do that. And it had to manipulate the data and use VBA to help me out there as well. Every time I hit run on that software, it would take hours and hours to run. Getting fed up with how long this was actually taking, I was set about writing a Python script that did the same thing. And after completing it and hitting run, it took a matter of seconds. As we were saying earlier, Python is really about that data manipulation. That's really where it hits home. And that's where you're going to get your biggest bang for your buck for a software such as this. And as it's highly tuned for the manipulation of big data, it makes our small data sets really easy for it to handle. And as you can see, by moving it out into its virtual space, I was able to save hours and hours of computing time through utilizing what Python is best for. So by moving it out into a space that can do the same thing that would take hours in a matter of seconds, you're able to iterate more often to come up with a more efficient design. Are there any programming languages that you would recommend? Please comment below. And if you enjoyed this content and you've made it to this point, hit that like button. And if you want to get more updates about structural engineering and how to progress your career, hit the subscribe button. And to get all updates, you need to ding the bell. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye.